y te quiero dar una vez más la cordial bienvenida de estar con nosotros este martes, un martes que bueno a lo mejor estás en casita, vas a rumbo a casita, un martes que estamos tratando de mantenernos sequitos bajo la lluvia y el frío, pero te digo que cuando uno se acerca al Señor, Él nos llena de su calor, de su amor y bueno en esta tarde quiero darte la bienvenida nuevamente, si tú los estás viendo por las redes sociales, te invito a que este momento, en este momento en este segundo presiona ese botón donde dice compartir o share porque sabemos que al compartir puede ser que un amigo, una amiga, un familiar que necesita escuchar lo que Dios ya ha planificado en esta noche a través de la alabanza y la palabra, necesitan ellos escuchar esa palabra de esperanza en su vida y tú puedes ser ese uh, vínculo de bendición para ellos y bueno sin más preámbulo ¿por qué no iniciamos este servicio ahí donde tú estás, si estás manejando, no cierras tus ojos, pero si tú estás en casita te digo, ah, te invito a que cerremos nuestros ah, ojitos y le pedimos al Señor, dice su palabra que cuando dos o tres estamos reunidos con un solo propósito, el Señor se hace presente y creo que hay más de dos o tres personas aquí y aún yo sé, tú te estás uniendo con nosotros, estás haciendo parte de lo que Dios va a hacer en esta noche y bueno, inclinamos nuestro rostro y le pedimos al Señor que nos bendiga en esta noche. Señor gracias nuevamente por esta noche Padre gracias porque nos das la oportunidad Señor de poder unirnos y aún poder bendecir Padre por estos medios a tu iglesia Señor y aún dice tu palabra Padre que, a ellos, que los que claman o los que te buscan te hallarán los que tocan la puerta Señor tú los abrirás y en esta noche Padre como una iglesia colectiva a donde estamos Padre dice tú, tú eres omnipresente tú Padre te puedes manifestar en cualquier lugar y te pido Señor que en esta noche tú nos hables Padre abrimos nuestro corazón dispuestos a recibir la buena palabra pero más aún también abrimos nuestro corazón para entregarte a ti también un una alabanza, una, un momento Señor de gratitud Señor, alabamos y glorificamos a un Dios Padre, un Dios grande, un Dios fuerte, un Dios que nada es imposible, más aún un Dios que escucha a los justos un Dios que responde Señor y por esa razón te adoramos te glorificamos Señor y aún Padre te digo bendicimos aún la palabra que, que nos traerá bendición a nuestra vida Señor, que nosotros seamos as Hacedores de tu palabra Señor Que no solo seamos os, que, Oidores, que seamos gente Que practicamos la verdad De tu palabra porque en tu palabra Hay plenitud Hay prosperidad y hay vida Señor, te damos gracias por esta Noche Señor y gracias Padre Por ser ese Padre, ese Padre Grande que protege Que levanta y que restaura Y aún nos rodea Con su amor y en eso te damos Gracias y en el nombre de Jesús, amén y amén y ahora con esta verdad hermano te invito a que declaremos una verdad y la verdad que tu Dios es grande, tu Dios es fuerte, no hay nada imposible no importa la circunstancia tu Dios es más grande, únete con nosotros en esta, en esta noche unánime, vamos iglesia Oh, te damos gloria Señor Mi Dios es grande y fuerte Tu palabra vence Mis enemigos tiemblan Y huyen delante de Él Vamos iglesia Mi Dios es grande y fuerte
vamos Estoy contento porque le tengo a la vida La vida eterna que Jesucristo me dio Yo tengo gozo, tengo paz, tengo alegría Camino al cielo yo voy Esta alegría que yo siento aquí en mi vida Yo no la cambio Dios es bondadoso, Él es bueno y lleno de amor y misericordia Oh nuestro Padre cuida y vela por nosotros y Él escucha tu clamor, Él escucha tu petición En esta noche te quiero recordar que ese Dios que tú amas es un Dios todopoderoso Así como Él es lleno en gozo, lleno en alegría él es también todopoderoso El que puede contestar Las cosas que tal vez el mundo dice Es imposible Pero nosotros le adoramos a un Dios De posibilidades El Dios que nada es imposible para Él 
Por eso le adoramos y decimos Señor Oh tú eres todopoderoso Tú eres todopoderoso Rey Oh quien como tú Señor Quien como tú Padre Oh quien como nuestro Rey Oh te alabamos, te glorificamos Ahí en donde tú estás Eleva tu voz, eleva tu corazón Dile tú eres todopoderoso Rey Al que está sentado Y en el trono Oh sí Señor Y sea la gloria Oh por los siglos de los siglos Por los siglos de los siglos porque no declaramos sea la honra oh, y sea la honra o oh, sea la gloria y sea la gloria sea el dominio
más iglesia declara que tu Dios es y poderoso Dios y poderoso Dios y poderoso Dios mi alma clama por ti Solo puede saciar en una, el agujero de nuestro corazón. Él es el único que puede llenar, que puede saciar. Él es el rey, el único rey que puede oh, levantarnos, que puede restaurarnos. Él es nuestra plenitud. Vamos iglesia, dile al Señor. Tú eres mi rey, tú eres mi rey, tú eres mi rey, oh tú eres mi rey Señor Oh Santo razón, tú eres nuestra esperanza Padre tú eres el que llenas nuestra copa a quien y más iremos Padre si solo a ti Señor en Cristo Jesús eres mi plenitud Cristo Jesús eres mi plenitud en Cristo Jesús eres mi plenitud Cristo Jesús eres mi plenitud Cristo Todo, mi amado, mi tesoro, fuera de 
everybody and as the song said just at this very hour if i have you i have everything and that is a great reality a truth for us to understand this very hour and brothers as always great to see you all connected thank you for making the time and investing in this intimate valuable moment where the spirit of god is at this very hour as scripture declares when two or three come together in one accordance the lord is there and so i hope everybody had a great weekend and as a matter of fact we had a very long productive blessed weekend i at least did um uh, well there's so much uh to say and uh, so hard work to start but god has been good and this weekend was amazing with um, so many things occurred um, at the local church and just yesterday itself. All within a nutshell, uh, we had a youth uh, activity um, uh, outside picnic event and the atmosphere was awesome. It was amazing and just engaging with uh, brothers and sisters and, and just developing um, or reinforcing the bonds that are there and developing new relationships uh, with the body of Christ. It was awesome. awesome. And um, it's been a long weekend, but I can't complain. God has been good, amazing, and will continue to be. And so again, um, well, throughout the course of the broadcast, we'll have much more to say. Um, Just trying to get my train of thought together. But before we begin, as always, if you have not shared this broadcast, uh, this is the moment to, uh, to, to do so. If you're watching us through Facebook, uh, through YouTube, there's ways of sharing the link as well. And for those who are connected through Instagram, I see you there. Well, I at least try to envision that you are there, which I'm sure you are. Um, welcome. I think there's ways um, in bringing awareness as well within that platform. Good to have you with us in the broadcast. But for those who are connected in the other platforms, uh, like, subscribe, share, definitely gives us uh, a helping hand in bringing awareness to tonight's context and what God wants to speak and say. And also part of our worship, part of our gratitude for those who are in the position at this moment, wanting, uh, wanting and as well willingly contributing to the kingdom of God. Uh, you could do so by visiting the website llamadafinal.com or calling the number that's on display, which is 562-231-4660. And um, make sure you call, make sure to call during working hours and our brothers who are on on site will be there to assist you um uh, to cater to what your demands are uh in re- reference to your spiritual growth any other inquiries questions that you might have again leave us a direct message on facebook youtube and as well instagram and we'll be more than willing to answer at our earliest convenience uh any other in- inquiries please um let us know and we'll be 
will definitely answer uh, to the call. And so with that being said, let's enter into tonight's message. Let's um, dive into the train of thought this evening. Uh, go with me to Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, verse 9, and a couple of verses of this very eye-opener chapter. Talking about the end of days. And, and just um, wondering how many are, in a way, anticipating or having the back of their mind the astronomical event that's going to emerge um, pretty soon in a couple hours from now. I'm sure you're all aware of April the 8th and what's going to come across our nation in the United States, the eclipse that we all are um, anxious to see in the next couple hours. But again, we'll dive into that train of thought. But let's begin in Luke chapter 21, verse 7 and on that says, Then they asked him, Teacher, when will these things take place? And what will be the sign that these things are about to take place? Verse 8 says, He said, Be careful that you are not deceived, because many will come in my name and say, I am, and the time has come. Don't follow them. Verse 9, When you, when you hear of wars and revolutions, never be alarmed. Because these sorts of things must take place first, but the end won't change right away. Let me just read two more words or repeat uh, two interesting words that I believe are great, of great relevance uh, in today's time and era that we are living in. It says, you will hear of wars and revolutions. I hope that sparks an interest or, or, or sparks something in the back of our minds. Uh, and, and especially what has been taking place around the world. I'm sure none of us could deny the fact that there are rumors of wars. There are proxy wars as well, which even our country is involved in some shape or form. And there are even revolutions, just um, situations that are affecting the political realm in many nations. And things are just uh, are folding or coming to existence when it comes to the actual end of days platform. Hopefully that makes sense. But anyways, uh, let's begin with a prayer and ask God to speak to us this evening. Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for being with us, for allowing us to give you an offering of worship, of praise, and also uh, contributing for the expansion of your kingdom, for what you have uh, established within our hearts, Father. We believe that in the next couple of days we shall we shall reap a tremendous harvest, a tremendous blessing based on the gratitude and the willingness that we show to you, um, oh, that we show to you this very evening, God. Thank you for my brothers and sisters who are connected. Spirit of God, may you speak, move, and and also bring to our rem remembrance the areas that we must continue to work on and perfect so that the glory goes to you. In the name of Jesus and the people of God say, Amen. So let's endeavor in Luke chapter 21, verse 9 again. It says, when you hear of wars and revolutions, we shouldn't be surprised upon the current events that we are seeing around the world. And this whole new I will, I, will, I will call it virtual warfare, where it's not how we have how we picture it or it's not how we have pictured it before in the past. Um, the world has changed so much in the way how nations are now engaging with one another. It's not so much old fashioned diplomacy as we see in most textbooks nowadays. But this whole virtual warfare and proxy wars where other where other groups are fighting uh, their interests or the interests of other nations it has become the common norm the sudden sudden thing that we are seeing um in today in today's day and age but in this very very chapter 21 as as wars continue to arise and as rumors of wars continue to emerge which shouldn't be to our surprise because everything is is being position for that great arrival of Jesus Christ. As we all know, his second coming, it draws very close to us. 
But as we hear rumors of wars and actual wars that have been reported on the news news outlets, and as a matter of fact, just today, um, my wife kind of just mentioned to me that she saw uh, through the many platforms that that Iran is trying to is prepping up in retaliation to attack the United States. Um, now, why is that? I mean, well. Iran and the United States and most Middle Eastern countries that dislike this nation have uh, have animosity towards towards this democracy and animosity toward this culture. But mostly it has to do with what took place even a couple of days ago. Uh, I'm not sure if you have seen what the news have been reporting, but I believe Israel uh, attacked the Iranian embassy uh in the country of syria as you know syria right now is a mess it's a it's a it's, it's a wreck it's it pretty much is a proxy war because there's many countries that are sending special groups to fight on their behalf and syria for the last 15 years has been in this proxy war and just the the country itself it's it's about to collapse um culturally collapse within its economy lifestyle i mean conditions out there is horrific and i know that there are so there are many humanitarian organizations trying to assist the need assist the uh, those who are struggling and going through hard hardships in life as we speak right now but due to that retaliation that took place um, i mean due to that attack that the israelis did towards the iranian embassy um, the reports are now saying that the United States should be on high alert, uh, be ready for any retaliation or response by the Iranian government. Now, again, that that doesn't also surprise me. Uh, uh, just talking about a little bit of, of current events, as we all know, I Iran wants to develop uh, a nuclear uh, weapon, have its own nuclear arsenal. Um, the whole discussion about nuclear proliferation has been within the conversation the last, I would say, uh, three, three decades or so, at least four decades, where um, many countries, especially the superpowers of nowadays, which is Russia, China, the United States, India, uh, France, Britain. I mean, there are many countries that, now, that have a nuclear arsenal. And supposedly, the more you build, the more you threaten your, your enemy, it's a form of deterrence or a form, yeah, a form of de deterrence to, uh, to dissuade others um, to, to, stand, to, to stand off, to back, back down and not try to provoke any, 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 provoc any, provoke any other country to use their uh, nuclear arsenal. So it's a way of deterrence. That's how we call it which I find that very absurd because um, it's funny how the, the, the policy is if you, in order to promote peace, you must continue to develop much more nuclear weapons. And a World War III, brothers and sisters, is or will be, is pretty much the end of all human civilization. It will be the extinction of humanity itself. It will be such a horrific, tragic world event where no one will come come out as a winner everybody will pretty much just be um wiped away from the face of the earth so just imagine uh world war three is pretty much the end of the human race it will be a tragic just to even think or fathom of that situation but but going back um luke chapter 21 i want to go back to luke chapter 21 verse 25 because because this itself uh has great significance for uh, what's going to take place tomorrow on April the 8th. And, and please, brothers and sisters, um, if you're not under the umbrella or the shadow where the actual full eclipse will uh, 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 occur, don't try to look at the sun or at the moon uh, with, with, without, without uh, any solar glasses. Um, where we are here, for those who are in Southern California, we're going to have a somewhat partial eclipse, not a full eclipse. You know, the light's going to dim down just a little bit, not a lot, but just a bit. And some of you will see, will, will, will notice it. It's going to give that 
gloomy effect like you're you're in some type of uh twilight movie some type of film movie with different filters and co- and and configurations of colors it's going to change a bit the the lighting that we are accustomed to see during the day but please i i, I reiterate the, the the point do not try to look at the sun with your with your eyes directly it's still going to affect you uh, solar rays could blind you and affect um, your eyes and everything that's that gives you the ability to see but but going back jesus mentions the following when he's in the mount of olives with his disciples and he says this luke 21 verse 25 there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars and there will be distress on earth among the nations that are confused by the roaring of the sea and its waves people verse 26 people will faint from fear and apprehension because of the things that are to come on the inhabited world because the powers of heaven will be shaken let's just um let's just begin to dissect these verse two uh, these first two verses say with me signs signs in the sun in the moon and the stars and what's going to take place tomorrow is in connection with what took place on august 21st 2017 i'm sure some of you could recall when the first eclipse came down to uh revealed itself in our country the united states it started um northwest of the country started from oregon the state of oregon and then it just came slanting down but going southeast all the way to the tip of florida and many people saw that amazing account you know they many people witnessed the actual shadow of the of the eclipse itself which lasted for a couple of minutes as 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 many have reported and that was just the very first line that came down where just imagine a scratch like you get a pencil and then you then you just draw a line from one tip of the country all the way to the other extreme tip of the country and you have your first line well brothers tomorrow that another line is going to go across the same the, uh, the same country which happens to be the united states but it's going to start within mexico i think baja california and then it's going to emerge in a city called eagle path texas and then it's going to draw another line across the country all the way until it hits um, the, the the border, the border reach of the United States, which is which is the country Maine, which is border with Canada, a particular area called Nova Scotia. And the interesting part about this is that even senior pastor today in the morning somewhat briefly mentioned it. And I also mentioned this um, a couple of sermons ago and last week's broadcast. I'm sure some of you could recall that sermon. But interestingly enough, th- um, the last eclipse, which was a couple of years ago, as I mentioned, August 21st, 2017, the, the very first eclipse crossed uh across many cities that had the same name um i think one of the 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 very first name was called if i'm not uh the very first name or cities with the with the same name was the was the name salem and salem means peace which means shalom itself but now in this eclipse it's going to cross paths with many cities that have the similar name as well and the funny part that the the, this uh the name that they all are going to share for the day of tomorrow is Nineveh so just imagine Salem the first line and then the next line is Nineveh and Nineveh as you all could recall is pretty much the the story about the Assyrians and who were the Assyrians? The the people that were considered enemies of Israel. And the Assyrians did so much hardships. They attacked the Jewish people. They conquered their lands at certain points in time. I mean, they were just barbaric to begin with. Pa- a pagan nation that attacked the, the, the people of God during that time. 
And if you all recall the story of Jonah, again, this is just a friendly reminder. Jonah had uh, personal issues. uh, Jonah did not want God, God's mercy to be seen with the Assyrians. And that was the reason of his reluctancy of him not wanting to do what what God called them to do. Go and send the word of repentance to the people of Nineveh. Ask them to repent. If not, my wrath will come upon them heavily. And long story short, we all know the story. Jonah only consists about three chapters, I think, just three or four chapters, a very small book. But at the end of the at the end of the day, Jonah did what he was called to do, and the Assyrians uh, repented. Nineveh came to repent of their evil ways, and God's wrath was deta- detained. And so this eclipse that came in 2017, and now that we're about to witness in 2024, the day of tomorrow, it's, it, it's going to draw a big X on the United States. And there are many people, historians, um, even theologians who are associating that X mark as the Confederate flag of the United States. As you remember, there, this country went into civil war uh, two centuries ago. Um, yeah, I believe it was in the 19th century, 1964, 65, during the presidency of Abraham Lincoln, the nation was divided and millions, I mean, yeah, I think thousands and thousands of American soldiers lost their lives fighting amongst each other. It was one of the most bloodiest, uh, horrific events that the United States had to face in history. Now, With that being said, what's going to take place tomorrow, I believe, has great astronomical um, significance and importance. I believe that the eclipse, which many people who will be in the region of the full shadow of the moon, they're going to see the moon dark, blocking out the light of the sun. It's going to give that twilight image. And for a couple minutes, they're going to see stars that normally you do not see during the daytime. Constellations that are there during the daytime, but because of the light of the sun, we can't see them fully. But for those couple of minutes, you're going to see those stars kind of appear as their pupils begin, begin to readjust to see the light that's coming in. Again, it's going to be such a interesting moment to engage, but at the same time, it's a sign, I would say, that God is... God is bringing awareness and asking this nation, the people in this land to repent and come back and seek God. As we see in scripture again, there will be signs in the sun, signs in the moon and the stars. And there will be distress on earth among the nations that are confused by the roaring of the sea and its waves. People will faint from fear and apprehension because of the things that are to come on the inhabited world, because the powers of heaven will be shaken. I believe we all know to a certain extent, America, this country has flip flopped, has completely shunned away from the ancient path, those beautiful roads or path that will bring a refreshment to our spirit, to our soul. Um, At one point, the United States, I would say, promoted itself or was identified as a Christian nation. Not a perfect nation, because no one is perfect. But as a Christian nation was was the, you could say, the the trademark, the the identity that at one point this nation was identified. But if you were to ask me now, if that's the same mindset, brothers, we are very far away from that truth. We are very far away from the things that at one point made America, the United States, a great nation. Now we are seeing a a backdrop. We are seeing uh, a, uh, a culture, a community that have completely despised the things of God, have stepped away from the things of the Lord and have implemented ideologies, policies that are anti-biblical, that go against the very foundation and principle of the word of God. 
everything that we are now we that we are now seeing today at one point was considered unacceptable, weird, awkward, a taboo. Now that has become the norm. That has now become the way of life. And so this country needs to step back and repent from his wicked ways, from his tetra, uh, treacherous evil mindsets and come to and come to the Lord with a heart that could repent. The word of God says that God doesn't turn away from a contrite heart. Someone who humbles himself towards the presence of God. And I believe that what's going to take place tomorrow, this eclipse, it's just it's a warning. It's a warning. It's God saying, hey, you know, there is time to repent still. There is time for you to reconsider your ways, reconsider everything that has led to your descent in this country. And this warning sign is going to go by. As a matter of fact, um, um, they, they met, well, my wife mentioned to me that I believe a couple of repre representatives of NASA are going down to Mexico because, again, the first country that's going to cross will be Mexico. It's coming that it's going to cross through Mexico. And, you know, all these astronomers, people who are who are astronomers, astronomer enthusiasts, that's the word. They are going to dwell and take joy of this astronomical unit. And those who are going to in some way witness this account, they're seeing it as a as a as a great wonder in the signs. From a secular perspective, but we know that beyond, far beyond passing the secular perspective and realm, this has a very strong implication. It's God giving a warning to our nation. When eclipse, when 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 humanity sees an eclipse, usually it's a sign of judgment, a warning, a sign to come back to God. When, when Israel sees a blood moon, a red moon, and if it falls in one of its seven Jewish festivals, it's a direct sign and message for Israel uh, uh, exclusively. And when, and, when, and when the sun appears, which obviously appears every day, uh, according, to, according to historical accounts, and, well, and as well according to what we see in Scripture, the sun has been used by many pagan uh, beliefs, by many yeah, pagan worshipers, and they somewhat attribute the sun as their own God. But anyways, you know, these three accounts, even the stars itself will speak and show certain astronomical events where we cannot disregard them because it could be that God is speaking to the people and, and and again, rest assured, tomorrow, the world that's going to be Marvel, they're going to be on, this, on the TV screen witnessing this account. But in the spiritual world, God is going to give a warning, a sign to the people of this nation, of this uh, great land. Come back to me again. Come back to me. Turn around. Make a U-turn. I'm still here. Make me the center point of your life within your community. We see in 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, that says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day, the heavens will disappear with a roaring sound. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be exposed. Verse 11. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, think of the kind of holy and godly people you ought to be. As you look forward to and hasten the coming of the day of God, the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire. Just think about a picture. Try to describe this particular event. The powers of heaven will be shaken. Things will begin to descend on this planet. And it's not just because we happen to be close to the astral, 
asteroid belts, not because there are meteors around us. No, everything doesn't come by mere coincidence. Everything is sent deliberately with a message behind that. And we just have to be very attentive and know and seek the presence of God, which is very, very important. Guess what? We see another tremendous account in the book of Joel. Joel chapter 2, verse 30 that says the following it says i will display warnings in the heavens i'll read that again i hope that 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 brings your brings your attention or captivates your attention this this evening joel chapter 2 verse 30 says i will display warnings in the heavens and on the earth blood fire and columns of smoke Verse 31, the sun will be given over to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and terrifying day of the Lord. Every time I come across the book of Joel, especially these particular verses, it gives me it gives me a picture or it paints or draws a picture of total destruction annihilation nuclear nuclear war one could just fathom the type of weaponry that this nation and our allies especially our enemies have developed and how far technology has gone and inventing weapons that are just beyond what we could possibly fathom when we read the book of Joel, it gives a depiction, a description of, of these horrific accounts that will take place. We also see in, in the book of Amos, Amos chapter 8, verse 9 to verse 10 says, It will come about at that time, declares the Lord God, I will cause the sun to set at noon and the earth to darken in the daylight hmm uh, that's very interesting I, that should trigger a bell in you let's read it again it will come about at that time declares the lord god i will cause the sun to set at noon and the earth to darken in the daylight it seems like it's giving a description of a solar eclipse seems like it's giving a description how how is the sun going to set at noon when we know that the sun is at its highest peak at noon interesting right all these accounts we cannot ignore them we must meditate on them and ask god to give us wisdom understanding and but above all make sure that we are well set make sure that we are in good terms with the Lord. Only you know exactly how your relationship with God, as long as you have Jesus Christ center stage in your life and you know that he is your eternal salvation and that it's through him alone where we could find our peace, our comfort, and the reason why we are here, then you're pretty much set and done. Like you're you're good. You should be your conscience shouldn't be seared. Your conscience should be well intact with the Lord. Well, verse 10 says in Amos chapter 8, verse 10, I will turn your feast into mourning and all of your songs to Durg Durgis. I will cause all of you to put on sackcloth and to shave all of your heads. I will make them, I, I will make that time like mourning for an only son. And its conclusion will be like the end of a better day. Interesting the times that we are living, brothers and sisters. We also see in another passage, it's, I mean, there's so much we could talk in reference to this. Uh, well, the the Matthew verse, Matthew 24, which is in a sense parallel to Luke chapter 21 but matthew also says the following chapter 24 verse 49 immediately after the troubles of those days the sun will be darkened the moon will not give its light the stars will fall from the sky 
and the powers of heaven will be shaken loose. You know what draws my attention? Matthew says that the stars will fall from the sky. Now, if we see it from a from from a if we see it from a from a scientific perspective, like astronomy, I mean, stars are so far away from us. I mean, we're talking about within the thousands and thousands of light years. So if anyone has an, and everyone, if anyone here assumes that we're going to reach our closest neighboring star who happens to be Alpha Centauri, we are far away from that truth. Why? Because we don't even have the technology. We don't even have the ability to even go one third of the distance to our neighboring star. As a matter of fact, our neighboring star, which happens to be Alpha Centauri, if we were to go one third, that trip should have already taken place at the day of the time when Jesus was on earth during during his crucifixion till now, 2000 years later, we would even be at a third just yet close to it, but not even a third of, of the travel distance. So that just comes to know how far away these stars are. But here's the thing that the draw that draws my attention reference to the description, the stars will fall from the sky. Haven't you all noticed and look into it. You you go, you should Google it whenever you get a chance. Not right now, because right now we're, we're having this conversation tonight. Um, but stars will fall from the sky. They say that the earth, I'm not going to say atmosphere because the atmosphere will, will technically still be with, within the ozone land of the earth, but outside the atmosphere space around the earth, not outer space, but inner space around the earth. They're saying that there are thousands and thousands of satellites right now as we speak orbiting around the earth for example what allows you to get reception internet on your cell phone you could be anywhere in this country even outside internationally and still have the ability to get reception and and to surf social media and to dive into the virtual world why is it that you have that flexibility very simple because there are satellites orbiting connecting making sure that they cater to their customer base for them to have that type of ability for example you all heard about this new technology called starlink uh, created by elon musk and his and his company starlink is pretty much a satellite service it's a some portable antenna that you could take anywhere around the world. Like if you were to take a road trip and go to the most remote parts of this country where there is no human civilization or, or no small town, but if you were just to launch or just um, prep up that star portable link system, it's going to give you um, service. You're going to be able to, contact people around the world. My point is this, that right now, as we speak, don't just assume that the international, uh, the international space station is the only thing orbiting around the earth. No, there are thousands and thousands of satellites orbiting around the world going, I believe going, I think going, going beyond 8,000 miles per second. I mean, that's pretty fast. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if those satellites around the world, which are orbiting as we speak, maybe some of them might are, are, are some of them are destined to divert from its trajectory. Some of them are destined to col- to collide with other satellites. And I could just imagine just those large, dense equipment falling from the heavens and coming down. You know, when I read this passage again, the stars will fall from the sky. 
Sometimes when we see a quote unquote shooting star, we are not literally seeing a star. We're seeing just a piece of rock of iron that has entered our atmosphere and it's burning. And then we see the tail of it and then automatically we identify it as a shooting star. But it's not a star. It's just a piece of iron of heavy metal that has entered and it's trying to and the earth is trying to evaporate it. The atmosphere works as a defense system for us so that we don't we are not exposed or uh, to outside anomalies, uh, objects outside around our atmosphere. But it says the word of God says in Matthew 24, 29, the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of heaven will be shaken loose. Oh, boy. What awaits for humanity is going to be. Well, for those who are in Christ, it's going to be a spectacular um, moment of a lifetime because Christ is coming back for his church. But for the world, it's going to be such a horrific event that awaits for the, for them. Matthew 27 verse 5 also says from noon on darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. As a matter of fact, let, let's let's go to Matthew 27 verse 45 because this this um this setting or this eclipse according to what we, what we read in scripture, it's a very significant moment when Christ was crucified on the cross. As a matter of fact, let's let's read from verse Matthew 27. Let's read from verse 41 and on so we could see the context of what's taking place. Matthew 27, verse 41. In the same way, the high priest, along with the scribes and elders, were also making fun of him. They kept saying, he saved others, but can't save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe him. Verse 43, this is interesting. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him if he wants to do so now. After all, he said, they're quoting the words of Jesus, I am the son of God. Verse 44, in a similar way, the bandits who or the thieves who were being crucified with him kept insulting him. So just imagine adding insult to injury Christ is already beat up he's already in a very agonizing state I heard that crucifixion is one of the most torturous horrific ways or the horrific pains that someone experienced it's one of the most horrific uh, death pains that you could experience verse 45 says from noon and on Pay close attention. Mark 27, verse 40, 45 says, From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Hmm. Say with me, noon. As you all remember, how do we know in the day when it's noon? Very simple. Whenever you see the sun at the highest peak in the sky, Wherever region you are at, well, when the sun is at the highest peak, that is when we call noon. But it says here, from noon and on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Could it possibly be that in the crucifixion, 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 yeah, within, upon Calvary, was there an eclipse that took place there? You know, I'll leave that. I'll leave that up to you to decide. I'll leave that up to you to decide. Verse forty-six also says, "About three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani," which means, "My God, My God, why have you forsaken me?" When Christ was crucified, when He was nailed on the cross. Just think about how the whole scene looked looked like. Dark, bitter, 
gloomy. Even the earth began to shake for a certain time. This was when his, when the Lord, when he gave his, his spirit, when he said, it is done. That's when Jesus finalized what, what he came to do for us. But when he was crucified, just imagine the, the scene, the setting that took place from noon and on. It was not the most best experience, the most brightful day on any given day. It wasn't. So going back, let's go back to Luke. Because again, I, I can't disregard this, this truth. And as a matter of fact, in Luke verse 9, I mean Luke 21 verse 9, I believe verse 9, we are now seeing this taking place as we speak right now. Look at this. When you hear of wars and revolutions, never be alarmed. Because these sorts of things must take place first. But the end won't come right away. I believe that we are seeing these things now as we speak. All the rumors of war, all the proxy wars, all the, the animosity, all the, the things that are going about around the globe. It's all prep, prepping up for the coming of our Lord and Savior. But Jesus said to his disciples, do not be alarmed. Never be alarmed. Now, I'm not saying that tomorrow is the end of the world because it's not the end of the world. Tomorrow is not the end of the world. But tomorrow will a sign will be manifested to mankind. A warning sign. It has to take place. It will take place. We can't stop the inevitable. But take this as a sign for us to consecrate ourselves even more and not desecrate ourselves from God. But to understand that things are coming very rapidly as we speak. In Luke verse 21, don't be alarmed. These things must take place, but the end won't come right away. We are at the final stretch of what is taking place, brothers and sisters. Let's read another passage. Another passage that says on Isaiah. Isaiah 13 verse 13 says, Therefore I'll make the heavens tremble. The earth will shake from its place at the wrath of the Lord of the heavenly armies. At the time of his burning anger. They will be like a hunted gazelle. Or like sheep with no one to gather them. Each will turn to his own people and each will flee to his own lands. Interesting enough to say. Ezekiel, another passage says. Ezekiel chapter 32 verse 7 says. When I extinguish your lights, I'll cover the heavens and darken, it, and darken their stars. I'll cover the sun with a cloud. And the moon won't reflect its light. Another passage, verse 8. I'll darken the bright light, lights in the sky above you and bring darkness to your territory, declares the Lord. Interesting situations that we are witnessing firsthand. You know, let's go to Revelation. Revelation is such, is such a very complicated, intriguing book to read. There's so much mystery, so much information, depth. There's so much nuances. Every time I read the book of Revelation, even for myself, it is a challenging book to read. But there's something I do that it is appealing to, um, to, to state regardless. Revelation 6 verse 12 says, Then I saw the Lamb open the sixth seal. There was a powerful earthquake. The sun turned as black as sackcloth made of hair. And the full moon turned as red as blood. Verse 13, the stars in the sky fell to the earth. The stars in the sky fell to the earth. One could say, well, those, those could be actual satellites descending down or or ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, rockets, missiles coming down. Who knows? I mean, one could just 
could just fathom or imagine what this could be. May the Spirit of God give us give, give us um give us the meaning, give us of his revelation, understanding about this. The stars in the sky fell to the earth like a fig tree drops its fruit when it is shaken by a strong wind. Verse 14, Revelation 6, verse 14. The sky vanished like a scroll being rolled up. And every mountain and island was moved from its place. I mean, this this doesn't sound like your ordinary walk in the park, brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, let me um, let me oh, let me read this comment uh, from Brother Chewy Gomez that says he quoted Isaiah two verse nine says, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord. And for the glory of his majesty, when he arise to shake terribly the earth. And as a matter of fact, yeah, worldly, it says what he says, worldly millionaires are already building their underground bunkers. People are becoming very afraid now. I agree, brother. As a matter of fact, even Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg, the owner and the founder of Facebook. Can someone please explain to me why Mark Zuckerberg it's building an underground complex in the in within the islands, or I don't know which one particularly, but in Hawaii, somewhere in Hawaii, he's building a large complex, like a complex that is meant for doomsday. I mean, like end of the world apocalypse moment. And these billionaires, these millionaires are investing money in these um yeah, and these complex pretty much like they're like if they know something is about to trigger and to come, but we also know in, in Revelation, adding to uh, our brother Chewy had did mention on, on his comment, you know the rich people, the people with high power or or so called high profile people, they're going to shun and hide within the mountains, and they and they're going to think by shunning, going into those unbreakable security areas they think that in a way that's just, that is ex- escaping from god's wrath they completely are mistaken completely are far from the actual reality that awaits for them we also see in revelation chapter 20 verse 11 that says then i saw a large white throne and the one who was sitting on it the earth and the heavens fled from his presence and no place was found for them. Brothers, it's this it's amazing to know the things that we are going through. Tomorrow, um, the world is going to celebrate this as, wow, extraordinary. We're going to see an eclipse. And I'm sure it's going to it's going to it's going to catch most people's attention. People are probably going to tune in on TV to kind of see how this eclipse will emerge. But for the world, it's a, it should be a sign of repentance, a sign of turning back, of saying, Lord, forgive us of our sins. Forgive our land. Forgive the wickedness of our land. Forgive the policies that they have implemented, the legislations that they have allowed to pass, the bills that have become law that have gone against your will father this nation needs to repent if not i wouldn't be surprised i wouldn't be surprised if another civil war occurs in this country i pray to god that doesn't happen i pray to god something of that magnitude doesn't come because it's going to be very alarming very alarming could be that thousands and thousands of innocent people could lose their lives. I pray that's not the case. Again, maybe I I, I might be exaggerating a bit more on this, but um, it's not it's not to exaggerate. It's just the nature of it. You know, war itself is not pretty. War itself is unfair. War within its essence, no one wins. It's unfavorable. No one gets something something good out of it. The outcome is horrific. For example, just think about the catastrophe that took place with, with the Israelis on October. 
you know, more than a thousand Jews lost their lives is a sad reality. It is a very unfortunate reality. What took place a couple months ago. But now let's 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 rewind. No, let's forward now the tape to today. Look, look how many people in the strip of Gaza have lost their lives. Talking about the Palestinians. Even about those Christian Palestinians, how many believe uh, Palestinian believers lost their lives due to due to that conflict between that took place with Hamas killing innocent Jews, more than 1000 Jews, and as well the retaliation that is taking place. It's horrific. As a matter of fact, for those who have been watching the news, um, the United States, in a sense, is changing course on their policy, on their on their position with Israel. Um, some of you might know what took place. Uh, President Biden called Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and said, hey, you know, stop with this war already. You know, start sending humanitarian services. I mean, the country itself and the administration itself, supposedly they had an unwaver, unwaver alliance and support for Israel. But it seems now, according to the democratic ideology and the politics overall that's going as that's, that's moving within our country, the Bible says that at one point, at some point, Israel will be alone. Israel will be surrounded by its, by its enemies and will have no alliance. It's not even the United States, if the United States is still around, will not be there to defend Israel. When that day of Armageddon comes, Israel is not going to have no support from the ground, from the sky. The only support that will come on Israel's chosen elect, because there is a small remnant that will be part of the lamb uh, of the lamb of god that will form part of the kingdom just a small remnant scripture says cuz the book of the book of zechariah for those who have read zechariah zechariah mentions that two thirds of the jewish people will be wiped out it's a sad reality but that remnant that will stay there god is going to god is going to defend that chosen remnant. God is going to fight for his people. God is going to destroy its enemies. It's going to, it's going to prevail in defense of his chosen elect. But right now, the United States and many other Western um, countries are there in support of Israel. But right now in the UN, in the in the UN, in the United Nations, there was a resolution that took place where a vote was being was being counted in reference to the the humanitarian crisis there that there is in the Gaza Strip, and every country uh, voted against Israel to stop their to to stop their violence and their troops in the Gaza Strip, and obviously the only uh, countries that are able to veto any general vote is China, Russia, the United Kingdom, and the United States, and France, I believe. I think it's five countries. Everyone voted in support of refraining Israel, but the United States voted against everybody. So they, they have veto power. They said, no, let Israel continue to do. But just imagine the the whole UN went against Israel and only the United States stand alone with Israel. But it's going, it's going, but a time will come when not even the United States will be there to defend the Israelis, the Jewish people. But anyways, going back, Luke 21 verse 26, people will faint from fear and apprehension because of the things that are to come on the inhabited world because the powers of heaven will be shaken. Verse 27, then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great joy. That's amazing that Christ is speaking of himself, of that glorious day that awaits for the kingdom of God will come 
in the cloud with power and great glory. And it also says, verse 28, Now when these things began to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your deliverance is approaching. Brothers, when that glorious day comes, then yes, lift up your gaze, lift up your heads and look at the coming of Christ. But for tomorrow, please don't lift up your gaze. Do not look at the sun. You might have a you might have a partial eclipse wherever you are at. If you're not under the shadow of that full eclipse, don't even dare to look up your eyes. It, you could you could get blind. It could, it could affect your your eyes. You don't want you don't want to you know uh, you don't want to experience that that unfortunate reality that has affected many people down the line. But going back, I'll bring closure today. We're about to wrap things up this evening. Um, even Mark chapter 13, 26 says, Then people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. I mean, there's so much here just to um, dissect and to speak about uh, this very evening. Um, as a matter of fact, oh, Brother Robert, thank you. Thank you for for, for quoting that uh, Zechariah 12, 10. What a glorious day that will be when the Jewish people finally see their Messiah, Jesus, and their eyes open. Yes, when it comes to the, to the, the chosen elect, that remnant that God, um, God will save from their enemies and what's to come. Brothers, I just want to leave it at, here at hand. I'll finish off once again what we see in Luke 21, verse 45. There will be signs in the sun. We have seen that in history. There will be signs in the moon. We have seen that in the course of history. And tomorrow is going to be another sign from the heavens. The moon is going to cover the, the sun. And it's going to give that twilight feel, that twilight image. It's going to be, a, I'm sure it's going to be a remarkable event to see. But behind all that, just have have in your mind that it's a warning sign that God is sending to the people here in America. Come back to me. Come back to my ways. Come back to the root of my purpose in your life. So we're going to see a sign tomorrow from the moon. Jesus says, just said the Father and the stars. And there will be this stress on earth among the nations that are confused by the roaring of the seas and its waves. People will faint from fear and apprehension. Verse 27. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with great power and great glory. Verse 28. Now, when these things begin to take place, which I believe we are there already, brothers and sisters, stand up, lift up your, your heads, your gaze, because your deliverance is approaching soon. What amazing, amazing eye opener of what is to come, what to, of what we're going to expect to see tomorrow and within the days to come. 2024 is such a significant year uh, with so many supernatural events. And brothers, let's stand firm in the faith. Let's contend for the faith. Let's defend it at all costs and continue to ground ourselves and nurture ourselves in Jesus Christ. And how many could say amen to that great truth? Brothers and sisters, let's close up with a prayer and have God Give us a great week ahead. Join me in prayer this evening. Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this friendly reminder. We know that you are speaking in many ways, shapes, and forms. We know that tomorrow's, tomorrow's astronomical event is not just a mere coincidence. It's not just the moon crossing path, causing a shadow here in the United States. Everything has a, has a reason, a purpose. And if it's a sign for your people to come back to your ways, Father, let us take advantage of that opportunity. Let us repent as a nation and bring you uh, and consider you again, Father, in, 
in our lives, in our culture, in everything that has this country circulating, Father. Thank you for my brothers and sisters who have connected, who took the time to be here. Give us a great week ahead. And thank you, Lord, for the very mantle, the covenant of peace and prosperity upon our lives. We declare, Father, that your church will be protected. Your church will be in the palm of your hand. And you will guide your church in times of hardship, in times of perplexity, in times, Father, of despair, in times of spiritual dryness, Father, you will lift up your church for them to rise up to the call and to bring you center stage to the things that are to come. In the name of Jesus and the people of God say, Amen. And as always, let me just... um bring into the um the conversation those who are connected with us as well again thank you brother robert robert god bless you brother brother chewy as well god bless you thank you thank you for that comment for that contribution on your behalf chewy and uh, brother robert we also have anna anna castellano dios me la siga bendiciendo god bless you daniel gomez god bless you and also yes friendly reminder uh, we are just two, yeah, about two weeks, two weeks and a half away from for our uh, ministry gathering, our confraternidad, our fellowship with all the churches in this country, our, as well international um, churches that are going to come together uh, to to the local church in Downey to have a time of fellowship and our. Confraternidad, our fellowship ministry uh, gathering. And so, again, looking forward to that event that's to come. Let me just give the announcements. Uh, help me spread the word, the good news. Uh, where is my calendar? There it is. I just found it. Uh, let me give you the dates again. It's um, April. April 19, 20, and 21st is our Confraternidad 2024 our confraternidad where we're going to have a great time for those who can make the trip and be with us as we say mi casa es tu casa my house is your house we are going to have a wonderful time uh in april and so um help me spread the word and i'm sure and if i don't see you physically i'll see you virtually through the means of communication and so that's it for me, brothers and sisters. You all have a great, splendid night. And may you have a great week ahead. Many blessings to all of you. Good night, everybody.